guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title, I'm making another Will I Buy It video. I love Will I Buy It videos, you guys. Thank you so much, Samantha March, for making that a thing. And of course, if you guys are looking for more videos, she created a community playlist, which I'll try and remember to link in the description box. Gosh, I always like forget to do these things. So sorry, but yeah, check out that Will I Buy It community playlist because you can find a lot of really fun content creators on there and it's just been a really fun experience to be a part of that. So let's stop blabbering and get into it. The first thing I'm seeing is this NARS Hot Tryst Cheek Palette for $59. I actually really like the blush shades in this palette. It looks beautiful. I'm really into a shimmery blush, so I feel like these shades would be really, really pretty. I just don't know about those first two shades. They kind of look like, the well, the one shade for sure is going to be too light. The bottom shade might actually really show up beautifully on my skin. So that'll be interesting. I would love to try it. I just don't know if I'm going to splurge on more cheek stuff. I've been trying really hard not to buy cheek palettes just because it's not my thing. I have a few blushes that I love and continue to use. And I don't feel like it's something I'm as drawn to. So... Yeah, so far I'm, I'm good on that. The Pure Cosmetics Grinch Collection. So there's a good enough to steal a face palette and color changing lip balm set. There's like a bunch of stuff from this brand that they're doing this collection for the Grinch. And maybe if I liked Pure, I'd be interested in it, but I don't. So I am going to go ahead and pass on that. LC Cosmetics is coming out with some concealers. I personally am not a fan of LC Cosmetics. I need to add that to my list of brands that I don't really like. I just feel like they're very expensive. I get that they're an indie brand, you guys, but I don't know. They I tried some of their palettes and their foundation, which everyone was raving about again like a couple of years ago on YouTube. I wasn't really that impressed, so I kind of just told myself I wasn't going to buy anything from them. Okay, Lime Crime is coming out with a 10-year, is it? Their 10th birthday collection, and there's like a colorful palette, there's a train case, brush set, pin set, confetti something, diamond dew and confetti, 10th birthday palette with all these beautiful shades. There's a bunch of stuff. I haven't really bought anything from Lime Crime in a long, long time. I did pick up their original Venus palette and ended up just decluttering it and selling it to a friend because I didn't really love the formula. So yeah, I don't know, kind of really don't have a lot of thoughts on Lime Crime. I know some people don't like to support the brand because of, you know, previous drama they've been involved in. That's not really why I don't like Lime Crime because you can buy it on Alta now, which I feel like is pretty safe. You don't have to worry about like your card information being stolen and stuff like that, but just not something I'm interested in as far as the brand goes. Charlotte Tilbury Superstar Lips. Oh my gosh, these look amazing. It's a high shine gloss with the staying power of a lipstick. And I really want to try these. But unfortunately, they're not available on Sephora.com yet. And she's selling them on her site. And I'm so, so curious to buy one. But I'm like, no, Karen, you don't need a lip product. Plus, they kind of remind me of the ultra blotted lips from ColourPop, which I also never wear. I still I still end up wearing liquid lipsticks. Like that's my go-to lip product because of the longevity of them. But the shades of these Charlotte lip, Tilbury lip products interest me so much. I really, really want to buy them, but I'm not going to. So pretty proud of myself about that. Highlighters that I really don't feel that intensely drawn to buying them. The thing with Wet n Wild is they are so affordable and it's so easy to just keep buying and buying and buying. And honestly, I'm like Karen like you need to you need to slow down. I really don't need any more highlighters They're all starting look, to look the same to me So I'm so glad I'm not drawn to these ones and I'm passing on them I kind of want to try because I love the shades. This is the Natasha Denona cranberry palette It's gonna be available October 25th on Sephora and Beautylish. I just love the shades. I'm so into this I do feel like a lot of these shades I have, you know, over and over again in other palettes, like the Queen of Hearts palette and stuff like that. But there's something about it being in this size that really draws me in. So we'll see if I'm interested in picking that up. I haven't made up my mind yet. And then Fenty is doing this crazy launch for the holidays. She's got this like face palette. She's doing like some pigments. She's doing 
the most. Like these <laughs> lipsticks she's coming out with and she's doing the face sticks or the match sticks or something. All of it looks hella cool. Some of it seems hella overpriced. Like I can't imagine anyone paying like a hundred and something dollars for that like match stick set. Like that is so much money. And the metallic powder for $99, which is basically loose glitters and pigments for your eyes and stuff. So that comes out October 12th, and it seems really fun. I'm sure there's like these crazy Rihanna fans out there that are going to go ahead and pick up all this stuff. I personally am so happy that I'm not interested in anything from that collection. So I will be passing on it, but I'm excited to see people's reviews on the stuff. Okay, Violet Moss is coming out with a vault collection. Now I feel like the vault thing is like a great way to sell more product. Really just break up like one eyeshadow palette into four. I love the Violet Moss formula, but I wasn't a fan of the formula in the Flamingo palette. So I feel like I need to approach with caution because all my vault purchases recently have been huge fails. Like I don't <laughs> have the Jaclyn Hill vault collection. Have not reviewed it yet because the few times I've tried the palettes, I was not a fan of the formula. I also have the Ace Beauté Vault collection and people have been asking me to review it and I just am not drawn to those palettes. It's like, I was so excited for them and then once I got them, I was like, this formula is not like my type of formula. So I have not like had any inclination to keep using them. But eventually I will get there and I will review them for you like 10 years later and everyone would have moved on by now. But that's how I roll on my channel. So yeah, they're doing Berry Burst, Creme Brulee, Fruit Sorbet, and Le Macaron. So they sound interesting. I'm hoping to see what the collection will look like. I might just wait and try and just buy it on Sephora.com because I feel like that way... I can feel a little bit comfortable if I don't like the formula, I can return it, which was the mistake I made with the Flamingo palette because I got all hyped and I bought it on Violet Loss's website and I didn't love the formula. It was okay, but it's nowhere near as good as like my Holy Grail palette or the Ride or Die palette that they came out with. So I feel like sometimes Violet Loss does a really solid job and then sometimes it's like they're releasing shit for the sake of releasing shit. So I'm a little cautious about them. The Urban Decay Naked Cherry Collection has finally launched on Sephora.com as well as Ulta.com. I did get the, like, oh, it's going to be available as a Platinum Exclusive email, and I was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that <laughs> whole situation, and then it is now available, and I'm so curious about it, but every time I look at it, I'm like, ooh, like, Karen, Please don't do this to yourself. Please don't buy another Urban Decay palette that you don't need. I have my eye on this though. This is the Charlotte Tilbury new eyeshadow palette. It's called the Pops of Supersonic Girl and it's beautiful. It's on our side. I'm so like drawn to this photo. Now this is like good product imagery and I want it so bad but I'm like Karen you don't need it. So I'm passing on it but it looks gorgeous. Um, okay e.l.f. is coming out with a new palette. This is part of like, they did one previously and now this one is called the Opposites Attract line and this is called the New Classics, 18 shades for $14. I feel like I heard somebody say the same thing and I was like, that's exactly how I feel. It might have been Samantha March, I'm not 100% sure, but somebody I was watching one day was talking about stuff like this in a Will I Buy It and she's like, you know what, the thing with e.l.f. is I want to support, I love their, like, that they're trying but their eyeshadow palettes never work out for me and even though it's like $14, it's still $14 I could put towards something I actually want to try. So I will be passing on that palette. I kind of love that Ofra is doing minis. They're doing like some highlighter blush trios and some highlighter trios and some liquid lipstick. So I think it'd be really, really interesting to see what those are like because I haven't really tried a lot of Ofra products. I think I have like one of their highlighters and that's about it. So I'm uber curious to see what that might be like and to just get smaller quantities of things is just so much easier for me because I have so much makeup already. 
Okay, so Mac Girls, they're doing some new stuff. There's a Girls Pretty Punk palette, lipsticks, God, I don't know, Rave Girls, Smarty Pants, like, I don't know, you guys. I feel like I used to be so into Mac, and now I'm so not into Mac, so every time I see something, I'm like, Ur. like, not interested, super duper pass. Uh, NARS has, like, a bunch of stuff, holiday stuff. I don't know, none of this is really, like, calling my name. Those eyeshadow palettes are definitely... Not my cup of tea, but I can see people being into it. I think I saw Mel Thompson talk about how she was so excited for the holiday collection. I like the look of the cheek palette, I thought. But you know, to each their own, good for people that love different things. That's okay. That's why everybody gets along when, when everyone has different opinions, right? Here, Kylie Cosmetics. You guys, I try not to talk about Kylie because usually I'm talking shit about Kylie. But she comes out with so many collections, I don't feel like I would be doing a good job as a beautiful channel if we didn't talk about these things. So she's doing what? Like four lipsticks, one matte lip kit, two eye glitters, one pressed powder palette, one highlighter, one gl glitter gloss. This girl has more collections than even ColourPop, I think. I really want to sit down and calculate how many collections Kylie's come out with so far for 2018. I think that would be a really fun video to check out. Let me know what you guys think about that. I think that would be fun. So I must say the eyeshadow palette colors are really cool. But I don't trust her formula. I have bought two palettes from her previously and they were okay. I think definitely like more ColourPop quality. So if she was selling these palettes for like $16, I could totally justify it. But not for that price point. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on the whole Halloween collection. I never really buy anything from Kylie. So... I just want to talk about it because, you know, it's something that's relevant to the beauty community right now. I am so excited that ColourPop did this ooh la la palette for October 3rd, which was like Mean Girls Day. I think it was just like a made up excuse for people to buy makeup and wear pink, which I personally don't think there is any reason. I mean, I love Mean Girls, so, you know, I wear pink whenever I want to and... God, that used to be, so, that was such a good movie. But yeah, this palette was so cute. I just had to get it. And you guys know I'm obsessed with wearing pink eyeshadow. So super duper happy that they launched that and it's on its way to me. Okay, Fenty has been like doing the most and they did four new liquid lip shades in their Stana lip paint. And there's Unveil, which is, Unveil, sorry, which is a beautiful chocolate brown, unbuttoned, a beauteful peachy nude, uncuffed, a beautiful rosy mauve, uninvited is a soft black with a hyper limited matte black cap, and it's glow in the dark packaging. Okay, that's interesting. I really want the shade uncuffed, but I'm trying to wait for a Sephora sale because I don't need any liquid lipsticks. I want to try the Stunna formula because a lot of people seem to like it, but 24 bucks on a liquid lipstick when I already have so many liquid lipsticks like I have enough liquid lipstick where I don't need to buy liquid lipstick so I'm gonna try and hold out for a sale but I've heard nothing but good things about that formula so I'm excited the Hourglass Holiday Collection they are adding a limited edition confession ultra slim lipstick and in three of their best-selling shades. I'm not really interested in this. And then they're also doing a second base palette, which looks beautiful, but honestly, it doesn't look any different from the one they came out with last year. And other than the metallic pink packaging, there's really no reason for me to shell out $80. I would much rather use up the two that I have before I make more of those purchases. So I'm going to be passing on it, but it's really pretty. And I love my Hourglass palettes. I actually have been using this one recently. This is the one from last year, I believe. Yeah. See, I haven't even made a dent in it, and it doesn't look any different from the one they're coming out with this year. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on it, even though I really want it. Here's a palette I'm totally getting. I have been on the freaking Huda train for the last couple of months, and she's coming out with a new palette. This is called the Huda New Nude Palette for $65, and... I believe this is launching November 1st, and I'm excited. It kind of looks really boring, to be honest. Like, I don't know if these shades are going to really stand out on my skin tone, but your girl is curious as heck, so I'm going to be getting those because, come on, like, there's no way I can say no to a Huda palette at this point in my life. Lorac is doing a Shine Bright Pro eyeshadow palette, which includes 20 shades to take you from subtle to shimmering. This palette, <laughs> the top half looks like a snooze fest. The bottom half looks... 
fun. I just have not been a fan of Lorac shadows for a hot second, so I will be passing on them. But, you know, you, I, I know there's a lot of people that still like their shadows, so it's nice that they're trying something new. It's kind of giving me a Red Decay vibe, so it'll be interesting to see if Lorac can pull it off as successfully as Urban Decay does. This is so cool. This is the Persona Cosmetics Color Theory Eye Kit. They did a pink kit and a copper kit for $38 each. I love that they included a brush and an eye pencil and then just like a really simple little palette with five shades that you can basically use to create a look. I think this is genius. I think it'll be so fun to see if they do like a blue and like a green, a yellow would be fun. And just, I think this is just so smart because not everyone wants like a humongous eyeshadow palette. And I think it's really, really smart that they're doing like multiple components. So you're getting like a brush and you know, an eye pencil. I think that's really, really cool. So I hope they do more with that. Okay, it looks like Joseph Colors is giving us a sneak peek. They are working on a concealer. It would be interested to see what it's like. And then Jouer just came out with a concealer as well. There's so many concealers coming out. 25 shades um, available at Sephora. I really wanted to try their concealer, but I'm not like dying to try it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on that for now. Natasha Denona came out with the gold eyeshadow palette. I actually did pick this one up after a lot of contemplating. I wasn't going to do it because it's so pricey, but I was really curious to see if this was like anything different for me. So I will definitely review it for you guys once it comes in. I stay Lauder is doing more eyeshadow palettes. These are the Goddess Glow and there are like, there's one that's like a berry shade one and then there's like a more blue toned one. I think this is really fun because Estee Lauder is definitely known to be more of a mature brand and so it's kind of fun that they're doing some color and you know, it never really hurts to do color. Like they bought back this design, the Lancome highlighter in gold, La Rose Pour Day Charlotte Sparkle. I don't know what the fuck this is. It's a $60 highlighter and I bought this, the original when it first came out and it was honestly like a, like a dusty flower. It was so ridiculous. I was like, no thank you and I ended up returning it. So if you wanna just like blow money, you can definitely get it, but I just thought it was ridiculous and I have no intention of buying it. Okay, e.l.f. came out with this really cute set. It's called the Beautyscape's Modern Metals Collection. I've seen a bunch of people review it. The face palette actually looks really pretty. It's kinda calling my name, but I'm gonna wait and see if I can find it like on Ulta maybe I might pick it up, but for now, it's a pass, but it did look very intriguing. I am so excited for the Huda Beauty concealers. Oh my gosh, it's called the Overachiever Concealer. 31% pure pigment, and yeah, a whole bunch of stuff about it. 30 bucks per concealer. The shade range is kind of interesting. I feel like the medium skin tones didn't really get a whole lot of shade selection, but I'm thinking maybe she might expand her shade selection, hopefully in the future, but I'm so excited for that concealer, especially if it's like the freaking foundation. I love her foundation. It's like my holy grail foundation, and I'm very, very excited. Okay, so Suva Beauty did this like exclusive palette with Riley Rose, and I was actually kind of into it because I love the brand Suva. The owner is amazing. I follow her on Instagram, and it's called the Saffron Palette, but I looked at it, I looked at it, and I was like, Karen, you don't need those shades, like stop it. So I didn't buy it, but it's really pretty. Uh, Smashbox came out with another cover shot palette. I think they're kind of really milking this whole cover shot palette situation. I don't actually know who's still buying these palettes because I've never actually heard anyone give it a positive review. $29 and it's like all purple palette. I personally think it's a snooze fest, but you know, to each their own. Jeffree Star came out with his like lip pencil line. I love that he has such pigmented lip liners. I'm personally not a fan of lip liners, so I won't be picking any of those up. Beauty Bakery is coming to Ulta. I think everyone's really excited for that because they are a smaller indie makeup brand and it's also a black owned makeup brand. So I know a lot of people are really, really excited for that. Oh, okay, so I don't know if you guys know who Miss Fame is, but I believe, was she on RuPaul's Dark Race? I can't remember, but she is 
beautiful, beautiful drag queen. Oh my gosh, her drag makeup is beautiful. And she came out with her own makeup line. I believe it's all lipsticks for now. But if you're looking for somebody that is a male that can do bomb makeup, I would totally check out Miss Fame. So Makeup Forever is coming out with this Life is a Stage right? Is that what it's called? This palette, this humongous palette that everyone's been talking about. It was so funny. I was watching somebody else's Will I Buy It video and they're like, this palette looks like it costs $300. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably going to be like super freaking overpriced. So I'm with them not going to be buying that. But I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, does Makeup Forever like not have a clue like what people want and can afford? Because I did buy their blush palette from last year's holiday and I do really like it. But that thing was so freaking expensive, so I just don't understand sometimes when they do these like really, really giant expensive palettes. Because, I mean, people can't just keep buying stuff. <laughs> like, what's up with that? Okay, so this co looked cool. This is the BH Cosmetics Holiday Palette. It's called the Royal Affair Eyeshadow Palette for $18. So, I love BH Cosmetics, don't get me wrong, but I just don't need more palettes from them. Right now, I actually bought the Aurora Lights Palette. Because I was on this kick where I just bought everything they came out with. And I swatched it in a video and I basically just sold it the other day on Poshmark. And it's a beautiful palette. But I just didn't have any time to dedicate to even putting it on my eyes. So I never did. And I was just like, Karen, like get a grip. Like you can't just keep buying shit. So yeah, sometimes you just have to give yourself a little pep talk. And you know, stay awoke. And just not buy things just for the sake of you like the brand. And this palette looks cool. I love that olive green shade. The shade Crown looks gorgeous. I think they really did something different. These brushes look beautiful. There's pigments. There's a face palette. Like there's all the things and it's all affordable. So it's very tempting. And if you're on a budget, I would totally recommend BH Cosmetics because they do make really, really good stuff. But I was like, Karen, no. So I'm very happy that I didn't buy anything from that collection and then let me see if there's anything that I have saved from indie brands I think the only one oh I did want to talk about this this is the gimme glow grunge palette and this is coming out soon mid-october for $41 and there's nine shades these pants are 37 millimeter and so they're really really big and I have two of the gimme glow palettes and They've been launching so many stunning like singles and I was so like dying to buy some but I'm like Karen like again get a grip like you haven't even reviewed the two palettes you have from them like I bought the Summer Vibes palette and I used it maybe like a week and then I totally lost track of it in my makeup collection and I still owe you guys a review on their formula so I'm like yeah you don't need this uh, and I really don't like it's not very me I love the shimmers they look beautiful and some of the berry tones but this is not something that I like personally need so I will be passing on it for now and then Luxie Beauty came out with their fall collection it was called the Temptation Collection which launched October 1st the shimmers are stunning oh my gosh like this picture is gorgeous but I was like you know what I haven't even used the first few shadows I bought from them, so I decided to pass on that. I did buy this palette though because I just could not say no. The Feral Eyeshadow Palette by Menagerie Cosmetics. Gorgeous new palette from them and they are Makeup Monsters that is now called Menagerie Cosmetics. They just did like this whole rebranding thing and I think this palette is really beautiful. I'm super duper excited for that and then JD Glow Cosmetics came out with six fall liner shades. They're so beautiful and I was so excited when they launched because I was like okay I'm here for it. I'm gonna buy it and I like had them in my cart and I was like Karen like again get a grip like you don't need more liquid eyeliners like I have the foil ones they did previously and I don't use those enough either so I was like nope and so I was happy that I talked myself out of that. I don't know if I talked about this in my last Will I Buy It video or if Paulina just announced this last weekend but my good good friend Paulina from Paulina's Beauty it's her YouTube channel I will try and remember to link it down in the cards but she actually announced that she's going to be 
collabing with Blush Tribe. It's a brand she is a huge fan of. I have actually bought so many things from Blush Tribe just because I'm influenced by Angelica and Paulina and Lacey from Spooky Lips and Bad Hips. All three of those people are just constantly contributing to the loss of dollars in my bank account. But I'm so excited because I have the Fall Fusion palette coming to me and the Hasina palette as well. And once they launch the Paulina palette, you best believe I will be picking that up. And I have a feeling they're going to do an Angelica X Blush Tribe palette too. I have a very, very strong feeling that she's going to collab with Angelica as well. So yeah, that is everything for my video. This is going to be a freaking editing nightmare because I feel like I've been talking for a thousand hours. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love talking about makeup, you guys. So thank you so much for spending your time with me. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye!